Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hello everyone, Attack Power here and super pumped for this exciting Game 3. In this video, yeah, we have for you Game 3 of a best of three between Yuri and Farid Rommel in the third place final of the Division 1 Season 10 playoffs of the Star Division League. Today they are playing on Shadrin. And on our left in the red team, playing on the allied side, we have Yuri Tano using the third US armored with the Maverick diplomat type. And on our right in the blue team, playing on the Axis side, we have Farad Rommel using the 122nd infantry and the Maverick diplomat type. It's been a very nice competitive series so far for a third place final, which is nice to see. What do you think about these divisions, Attack Power? Uh, yeah, two interesting choices third armored used to be op then it got nerfed into the ground and now it's making a comeback we've seen it several times this season it's got a great mix of armor uh you know every kind of special sherman you can get a uh, very limited infantry tab but all your infantry come in half tracks which kind of like almost doubles their value uh lots of m8s you get your lot your m10s i mean it's just it's got a lot of good tools a whole bunch of great arty that can be moved around strong air force so yeah solid division overall if you're not fighting in the woods and a lot of your infantry have bazookas too that's big uh on the other side 122nd a division we don't see super often but it is really solid it's a nice mix of finnish and german infantry uh you get a card of stug fours along with a whole bunch of stugs then you get the pack 43 croup which is one of the best at guns in the game and then focke wolf spam and a lot of 150 mil artillery so a, an interesting division to be sure we've seen farad play quite well with it before yeah all right let's have a quick look at what is going down so for yuri tana on the top side on the left we have couple of armored rifles coming in with those M3 A1 half tracks, which have the 50 cals on them. We've got the flamethrower there, a couple of Jeep 50 cals. Further down, an M8 and an engineer coming in, another M3 A1 half track. On the bottom side, we've got a Bofors, an M5 gun coming in with a half track, the Jeep 50 and the flamethrower. And on the very bottom, we've got the flamethrower, uh, another Jeep there, the 30 cal Jeep with a recon, M5 A1 Stuart, leader variant with a couple of engineers and the armored rifles. And we also have an interesting unit here, the M4A3 Calliope at the start. That's fun. Over on the, yeah, it is. On the side of Farad, uh, on the top side, we have the Lati with the pack 40. There's going to be the Taka Ampoya, Sume Paisid. Uh, we got the MG42 in there, IG33 following up with the Stug 3. Further down, Pioneer Führer, Grenadiers, more so said with the Pioneer and an IG-33, another Stück, so similar compositions on both of those roads. And on the very bottom side, Lati, Grenadier, Lahetua Junta, uh, some Soma said as well. Yeah, I mean, interesting deployment, of course, with this, with the, you know, the Artie right off the bat, and he's going for the town here to secure that flag. Uh, the Lati are fantastic, probably one of the best AT rifles in the game, for sure. The best? I'm not sh Is it? Do you think it is? I'm not sure. Uh, the Lati, yeah, probably one of the best, if yeah. not the best. Yeah. Yeah, really strong for transport snipes and stuff, and even killing light armor, such as M8s and things, and especially half tracks. Like, this will be a great unit for killing half tracks. We see the Taka Mpoya here killing a Jeep right off the bat. The double shot out of the sniper can, like, insta drop most things. It's really strong. Flamethrower catching out that Lati. Down south, uh, Lati getting in, recon dying in the transport. Can't get into that that church tower there uh we do see the rockets coming in here Let's see how they yeah, do the Calliope was set on return fire so that he held it in position but he kind of held it just a little bit too long so it's going to overshoot a couple of these units the so wasted and the grenadier is probably going to be relatively unaffected by this calliope strike the lati will be pinned down though which will allow these m3a1 half tracks to actually get Quite a lot of pinning down with their 50 cals onto the Grenadiers, as Soma Boy said. So it will at least uh, force Farad to fall back for the time being. But not much overall damage done there uh, by the Calliope strike. On the top side, meanwhile, yeah, that Lati absolutely going crazy, killing the two Jeep 50 cals and finishing off that squad at close range. Now the Lati at the top, trying to get rid of both of the M3A1s, only manages to kill one before being pushed off by the armored rifles there. Yep, he does have another... Lahi, uh, on the Lahi Torunta here, so that will be able to probably kill this M3A1 as long as it doesn't get pinned oh. too fast. Push on the bottom side, the M3A1 half tracks capitalizing on the pins here, 
Pioneer, if you're keeping the Summer Poised from surrendering for the time being, this flamethrower, when it gets close enough, will stop that from being the case. Although the Lati coming in clutch there, taking out the half track that would have otherwise surrendered the Summer Poised, but the engineers may still do so. Flamethrower not quite managing to get on target. Now the fallback from the Pioneer Fjordar will leave the Summer Poised out to dry. Yeah, and Fer uh, Tanner sensing the weakness down here and pouring in more flamers and stuff. He's got. Uh, some more armored rifles coming in, and, and uh, Farad not really responding with enough force, I don't think. Uh, but we see up north, he has cleared off this hill. Stug 3 moving up. Uh, can obviously kill that M3A1 when it finally reveals itself, although this Sua Poised here going to take a 50 cal to the face here first. Yep. The Sua Poised going to be struggling against that 50 cal for sure. Those armored rifles, though, not the best infantry in the world. Uh, but finally, on this bottom side, we do see the summer points get surrendered. Grenadiers get killed off. And relatively good town control for Yuri early on. But I don't expect that to necessarily stay the case throughout the game, as the 122nd Infantry can be kind of annoying. The summer points are a very, very strong infantry squad, although most of them coming here in Phase A. Yeah, since he brought him in Phase A with one vet, he only got six, so... He's kind of burning through most of his strong Finnish infantry right off the bat. He does have Sturm Grenadiers, which can do quite well in a town. Uh, but outside of that, he is he's kind of already burned through his really strong, strong infantry. Lai Torunta here uh, moving through the town. He's going to get held up on this flamethrower. Flamethrower probably wins this fight just because, you know, the flames keep them from throwing their grenade and so on. But uh, Rommel on the micro there, dodging out of the house. Nice move there. Yeah, getting into the half track immediately the ig33 already scored a kill against the m5 gun up on that ridge which was a, a nice kill early on lahato yunta now struggling against the flamethrowers did manage to get the grenade off but the flamethrowers seem to have dodged it and take out that squad nice and easy so good micro there from tana to capitalize there yeah the stug 3 is going to be a bit of an issue though he doesn't really have i mean the bazookas of course but outside of that he doesn't actually have a way to kill that so as long as he keeps infantry around it, Farad should have a nice little brick wall here for that, for the time being. Although this Calliope might ruin... Nope, he's going after the IG-33. The IG-33 is moving. Yeah, so. and that Calliope not really going to be hitting the mark. Um, in the middle, up on the hill, the m 3 and the M8 were doing a, a lot of uh, suppression onto the Pioneer Fiora and the Summer Poised, forcing a lot of those back. Now j 7 coming in to try and get rid of this M8, which is causing him problems. Yeah, it just matters if this Bofors can get on target in time, the one way down south, and it doesn't look like it'll come into range, so he should get a nice JU-87 strike off here. Does miss a little bit, so the M8 does survive. This JU-87 pretty... Oh, he turned off the 250s. That's why it survived, because he only dropped the 500. Yeah, it was also just off target as well. Yeah. So, that didn't help. Now P-51 coming across, and there's no AA on the side of Farad Rommel, but Tanner actually pulling away from that as the Focke Wolf 190 A6 comes in, and all that Yuri really needs to do is play around his bofers and he should be fine. Yeah, one thing to note... On the bottom um, side, go ahead. look at that, Taka Ampuya going to be catching out the M1 gun, that's just a straight Ooh. up free kill for that sniper squad. Two snipers, easy kill. These things are so good. Uh, one thing to note, the Focke Wolf A6 is not the good one. The A8 is the one with the medium resilience, the A6 only has bad resilience which makes it significantly worse yeah it still has a good 420 mils though which yes. will yes. tear a p51 out of the sky very quickly indeed grenadiers did manage to get into the buildings here on the bottom side of the middle hill yeah and takes out the 50 cal and killed off the half track so a free flag there for farad nicely done yeah that was a really nice play there uh, really kind of held that up and he's got a quite a strong position up north uh, none of these, you know, the M5A1, the M8, they're all going to struggle to kill this Stug, even at close range. So he's got that hill held pretty good. Bofors going to force the uh, Wolf out of the sky. P51 going to try to get on its back to kill it off quick. It might succeed. Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. Nice, nice pick off there by the P51. A little bit of a burst from those 50s gets the job done. Got baited into the Bofors and paid for it. Now the Calliope coming down into the town. Uh, might kill off the Pioneer Fjord, which would be kind of devastating for Farad's infantry here because it would certainly weaken them quite a lot, but actually doesn't get the job done. Uh, Pioneer Fjord survives. Grenadiers remain at 2 vet. We'll 
recover that from their suppression a bit faster, might be able to prevent some of these close range infantry from continuing their push. Yeah, he was actually going after the Shug 3, but the Shug 3 had moved already to kill the M3A1 half track down south that was killing his Takampoya. Now, engineers are pushing up graphically. The Pianiti, though, in position now, but they only have rifles. So, this is, I mean, both of these guys only have rifles, but one is semi automatic, one's not. So, it's, uh, it could go any way here. Infantry falling back up in the center here. Pac 40, IG 33, now going to be able to support the town down south. So that's really nice. Going to do a lot of damage to those armored rifles. The flamethrowers did get killed off. Up north, Stug 3 finds an M3A1 half track for free. So that's a little bit of miss micro there by Tanner. Yeah, nicely done. Now the armored rifles coming up with those bazookas to try and capitalize on that Stug being much closer. But uh, on the hill, the M8's now gone, so the infantry is re-enabled for Farad to push forwards. Yeah. Bazooka does find the kill onto the Stug on the top side, so nicely done. Yeah, definitely a bit of a misplay there. The Lahi Torunta not going to be enough here to kill off all this light armor, although there's another Lati right behind it, so he might... Let's see if that M5A1 goes down here. It does! There, it's a big kill. Yeah, very nicely done. The Lati getting the job done. Jeep 50 cow goes down as well. The two armored rifles struggling to get much done, but we'll have enough men, it looks like, to get through the Surma Poisid and the pinned down Lahe Toyunta. So the, the hill, although there were some sacrifices made, will go over to Yuri. We do see some 60 mil mortars coming in. Now these are super strong, going after the 20 mil, the uh, Flakverling 20 mil. Uh, the Flakverling is moving, but unfortunately it's moving kind of into the targeting range, so it's going to take a full face full of the 60 mil. Yeah, in the middle, the Stug really helping out a lot here with the Stug 3 pushing forwards. Which Ooh. I thought the uh, Stug had killed the M8 already, but it looks like it, it was further back than I'd had thought. Uh, but yeah, the Sumopoi said, Pianelli, close range, easy, done there. Stug now engaging the armored rifles further down the hill. Pianelli coming across will force that M8 out of position, and then maybe the Stug can capitalize after that. So. This Stug's actually pro causing big issues for Yuri. Uh, he really needs to start bringing in some of the nicer Shermans that can penetrate those. Yeah, I mean, B phase is when he's really got his piles of Shermans to work with. He, he does have Jumbos. He could bring a Jumbo in, but I'm not sure if that, like, 100% solves any problem. It just makes things difficult. Uh, we do see we're about to hit B phase, though, so both players going to unlock their Maverick power for B phase. Some smoke going down up north. Engineers flying in. Uh, Taka and Poya can't do much about it. Can't kill those half tracks. He will open up on the engineers when the opportunity arises. Uh, probably the SDK of Z7 here are going to go down as well. And uh, yeah. A nice kill on the bottom. Pack 40 kills another M1 gun that was trying to push up there to get shots onto the Stug 3. Wasn't allowed to do so. P51 coming in with a strafing run onto the Pack 40. Does a little bit of damage. Um, might continue the strafing runs there as it's not under too much pressure from the AA on the bottom side. Yep, and uh, Farad down south trying to recapture his southern flag by swinging, like hooking underneath. Ju87 coming in up north, going for those engineers and stuff. The uh, check out this tech on Puya. It's been an absolute hero <laughs> right now. It <laughs> grenaded the M3A1, pinned and killed the engineers. Uh, the second engineer squad is pinned down, and basically, tech on Puya might be able to kill the M3A1 if it stays too close. Ju87. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's sad. That's sad. Oh, you killed your own hero. That was that was that was harsh. He didn't deserve that. <laughs> well, the also that problem, I suppose. <laughs> Does this Ju87 not drop the two fifty kilogram bombs? Because they didn't drop them again. I think he's just turning it off, or had it turned off and then forgot to turn it back on that time around. Huh. Kind of weird. Thirteen eleven though for Tanner. Uh, Farid on the flag advantage once again. His just pure aggression. Uh, Tanner's having a really hard time keeping up with it. Uh, IG-33 on the hill should be able to, to stop this M3A1 with its HE because the M3A1 was definitely damaged. There's a Pack 40 on the hill, too, that could just move up a little bit and kill that. 60 mil mortars hitting that MG-42, but the infantry up north dying as well, and here comes a, a blob of grenadiers to recapture the hill. Yep, Farah's going to get that back under his control. This IG is not firing at the M3A1 um, because... Oh, now it's not in line of sight, but before it didn't have its heat turned off, so it didn't automatically fire its HE uh, at the longer range. Uh, Sturm Grenadier is now coming in, though, to the town from Farid, and these chonky MP44 squads are perfect for this kind of terrain. Oh, yeah. 
and having a Panzerfaust as well just like gives him the opportunity to actually kill off this like M5A1 he's about to kill. And we've seen Tanner's position down south has really gotten broken down pretty badly. Yep. Let's see if the um, pioneers on stem grins do get this Panzerfaust on target. Looks like they will do the M5A1 there. Struggling to get its guns on target. And that's going to relinquish another flag in favor of Farid. The flamethrower is going to go down very quickly in their jeep as well. Yeah, that's rough. And I, I think once again we're seeing, I mean, the thing out of 3rd Armored is that your infantry, although the infantry themselves are cheap, they're expensive to bring in because you have to bring them in half tracks. So, you know, the cheap infantry of 100 and, uh, you know, 122nd is able to overwhelm them pretty easily. A nice micro here from Yuri Tanner with the 60mm mortars. I don't know if, like, the micro he's putting into that is really worth it, though. Like, especially... Like, there is, I guess, an enemy 81mm mortar. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, 60mm mortars can kind of, like, run on their own. You don't necessarily have to put, keep putting them, them in the half-tracks every single time. We do see our first Jumbo Wumbo here from Tanner. Uh, just Indeed. backed it off. Uh, there is nothing here that can kill that. Uh, of course, the Pack 43 can, but there's none out yet. Indeed. It would just rely on a Pack 40 side shot at the moment to get the job done. The Stoke 4 is in a nasty position up on this hill, so that could certainly put some pressure on it as well. Uh, but check out this like, abundance of infantry now coming in here on the bottom side for Farad, bringing in a bunch of pioneers to support these Sturmgrens. And this infantry disparity, I think, is only going to continue to get worse throughout this game for the Third Armoured. Yeah, and that is, of course, their issue. They just don't have a lot of infantry. And right now, Tanner hasn't been able to really make great use of his half-tracks, and that's really important for this division. They have to really utilize the half-tracks to make up for the lack of infantry. And I think the Lattes and, and, and you know, the AT rifles and stuff really broke down his ability to use those well. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the light armor vehicles early on uh, just really got punished by those AT rifles. It was really good to see. Uh, the Pioneers getting into position on this bottom side is going to give him another flag. Farad Rommel now up to 16-8 on this. And Yuri put in a really, really nasty position where your opponent controls now both hills on this top and mid area. That makes it very difficult to get in. Although, beautiful bailout here by the Calliope yeah. onto the Stoke 3 in the town. Yeah, easy to forget this thing has a gun. It's not just a rocket fire. It's got a gun. And it's doing it. It's doing its thing. Not that you really want it, it to is be. doing its thing. But we do see two M4A3s up north along with that jumbo now and a whole line of infantry. So Tanner looking to make his pushback here up north, it appears. Uh, re again, really impressive swing back from Farad in this town because he had lost it all and he's basically got it all back. Yeah, well, I kind of found it weird that uh, Euro Tanner kind of put so much effort into the town early on uh, in the first place because I think this was inevitable. Uh, to be honest, like we're playing 122nd against uh, third, you have oh. there again, Sturm Grenadiers, Sturm Appoised. Like both of those things are just going to kill any and all third US armored units in the game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I kind of thought maybe he would just post a jumbo up right at the beginning of the game, like up on the North Hill and kind of block all that up. We do see a pack 43 in now. So uh, Fair did spot that jumbo and he, he wants it dead, as we all do all the time. <laughs> yeah, this back 43 group, pretty cool unit, and actually rotate very quickly and get those shots on target when needed. Yuri Tanner now confined even more so to this top side, as he will no longer be able to use that jumbo in the open across that area there. Well, in the pack, the group has a higher rate of fire than the usual pack 43. Am I am I wrong? Or I'm pretty sure I'm right. It's got 10 rounds a minute instead of eight. I think. So Yeah, it also just aims faster. Yes, it does everything better. Uh, down south, so lots though. Lots of armor. Down, yeah, coming in. Marder 2, Stug 4 on the way. Yeah, and down south, uh, Tanner pushing back in because Farid Rommel's push was all pioneers, so there's no AT here to, to stop this. Now, Sturm Grenadier look, looks like it might be trying to fix that, although it's getting caught out here. We'll get unloaded by the M3A1 before it can get there. Lyope giving a fire at that flak friendly, but the flak friendly moving Farad all over his micro, doing a really nice job of not leaving things out to be killed. Yep, making sure things are moving, keeping those attack move orders on those 
AA pieces is a good idea because they will stop and fire at aircraft regardless and uh, they therefore also avoid artillery fire at the same time. 81mm mortar is going to help try and kill off the Bofors that were sitting on this bottom side but yeah the Lahitol Yunta now coming in, Shem Grenadiers backing them up, the Marders on their way. Uh, and there's a lot of options here for Farad to take complete control of this bottom side and grab himself another couple uh, another couple flags, even though he's already 15-9. Yeah, Tanner throwing down smoke up north. He threw down smoke and then didn't use it, and now he's throwing down more smoke. And I think we'll finally see the push, although this 81 mil mortar is kind of breaking up this assault before it's even happening. Pinning down infantry, adding suppression. Uh, definitely very unfortunate for Tanner's push. Yeah, it's a great play by uh, Farid there, noticing the smoke coming in immediately, mortaring into the smoke. Uh, very, very nicely done. Uh, one of the M4A3s, I think, was not firing initially there at the Stug 4, so it gave the Stug 4 time to get the two shots off to the two pens to find the kill. Now the leader going down takes away two vet from the M4A3 and the surrounding units. Um, actually, what's that? Just one vet, maybe? But uh, regardless... The Stug 3 does go down, M4A3 took a pen, no AT left on this hill. These infantry are going to have to do a runner. Do you see a Stug 42 coming in, and, and truthfully that could honestly do just fine up there. It's got the heat shells, it will one-shot all those things with its heat shells. It can pen these things successfully. Uh, so it can't pen the jumbo though. Oh, is that a jumbo? Sorry, I thought that was an M4A1. Yes, it cannot yeah. kill the jumbo. The jumbo's invincible. The heat doesn't scale at range, so it doesn't scale the closer it gets, so the heat round's never going to penetrate that jumbo. Correct. Nothing penetrates the jumbo. It's too strong. <laughs> Not even the king tiger no, penetrates the it's jumbo. Just, it's too powerful. It's too, <laughs> it's too fat. <laughs> but anyway, so continuing, we do see this grenadier can, in the center hill here continuing to grab this flag despite there being four armored rifles standing right there. Yeah, the Stur 42 just got picked off by the bazooka on the top side anyway, oh. so that was unfortunate. IG-33 returning the shot, though, with its big old 150mm HE. Pioneer will probably finish them off if the Pack 43 oh. doesn't beat it to it. Or there's just another IG-33 kill coming in. Yeah, IG-33 in the center hitting four armored rifles all at once. Ooh, that, that, that was painful. We see three Martyr 2s down south going to cut off the reinforcement. Takes out an M4A1 right off the bat. Going after the M4105. Should be able to handle that just fine. Yeah, this Martyr squad is absolutely tearing it. They've already killed an M4A176 as well. Oh, did they? Oh. And now they're going for the M4105. So one more shot will get the kill there. And oh, the bounce. <laughs> that was lucky. That was very lucky. Ooh, P51 goes down to the flak reeling there. Uh, not good. Doesn't have the points at this point to save those things. Calliope now is in range as well, although it's going after the M8. Martitude's not see it yet? No, they were just out of line sight. Now oh, they can see now it. Now they can see it. Down it goes. Down it goes. These martyrs are getting so much value. The M4185 is trying its best to get HE rounds on target, but it's going to take a lot of HE rounds to kill these martyrs. And the uh, martyr crew continues to move forwards continues to murder M4s. This is incredible value for these. Yeah. I, I, I would just never have the balls to do this. <laughs> I just don't. I can't see myself ever doing something this like, strong. <laughs> yeah, the M4A375 there, bouncing that shot, kind of gets away with not dying. Another shot coming through does find the kill. And two martyrs now down, and the last martyr falling back. It looks like Yuri's managed to deal with that little attack, but loads of Grens now pouring into the town to solidify this position. Uh, on the top, we see the Stug 3 take out the M5A1, Ooh. which means the Stug 3 is just able to provide constant fire support. The uh, Pack 43 killed the Jumbo. Jumbo is down. Died right next nice. to the M4A1 leader there. Uh, so that's massive. Yeah, we see things definitely not going great here. We're now into C phase as well. It's important to note. So both players down to a trickle of points to work with. Yeah. And just like game one, that was like, uh, was it game two? Sorry. Uh, the huge swing when like a, the consecutive amount of units that Yuri just lost there that were, were decently high value. 
uh, like all these M4s just dying sequentially like that in the late game of a Maverick versus Maverick matchup is just so devastating. Absolutely, yeah. Both literally and like to your psyche, it's just like, oh my god, what do I do now? <laughs> like, what do yeah. I do at this you just, point? You're just like looking at one side of the map, all your stuff's dying, and then you get notifications of more stuff dying from the other side of the map. And yep. uh, here, the grenadier is getting two pounds of foul skills, oh. one onto the M4, one onto the M5. And that's got to be cans for Yuri, <laughs> surely. Oh, that hurt. Brutal. Yeah, that was. And we see half tracks up north driving for the, the pack 43. Took some damage from 60 mil mortars and such. But down goes one to the Stug 4 behind the hill. Should be able to take out the second one and recapture that flag. There it goes. PNED trying to get to the half track to toss a grenade. Oh, it does have AT. I forgot these guys do have AT, yep. Chef. Yep, and down that goes. IG-33 now going to wipe out these armored rifles. 60 mil mortars. 19.5. Oh. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mortars trying to do with the pack 40. Uh, on the top side there, the Gren's going to be able to deal with the armored rifles at range because they don't have any MGs. And I think what basically just happened here is uh, the third US infantry just disintegrated and the rest was history. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, what do you? I mean, one uh, 120 seconds is a good counter to third. You have answers to their jumbos. Your Stugs actually stack up pretty well against their Shermans because the Stug four with its extra armor. Your infantry are cheaper and more efficient and absolutely dominate the CQC range. I, I mean, it's it's a rough matchup for third. Yeah, I mean, you can just see it with this Stug four here on the bottom side. I mean, it did just trade there because it was already damaged by the M4A1, but. Um, Two two kills for one there on the bottom side, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it for Tanner in that one. A brutal, brutal finish. Uh, Farid, fantastically well done in that game. Twenty four minutes nine seconds finds the victory and the two one against Yuri Tanner in a very decisive victory. Absolutely, and that's also their kill to death ratio, two to one, basically. Sixteen hundred and fifteen kills for Tanner, and thirty three hundred eighty five kills there for Ferret. So, yeah, nothing really going Tanner's way that game. Uh, very rough to see. Great match overall, really fun. Uh, but Ferret pulling out a nice third place win here for himself in this season ten of the Steel Division Two League. Yeah, congratulations to Ferret getting third place. Commiserations to you, Tanner. But a very, very fun series to watch. Anything else you'd like to add? No, thanks for an awesome cast, as always. All right, that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.